Hey, thanks for joining us. I'm Gary Martin Hayes. I've been practicing law now in Georgia for more than 28 years. When I started practicing law, I used to represent insurance companies, but now, now I only work for injured victims and their families. In fact, since 1993, we have helped over 38,000 people with a wrongful death, personal injury, and their workers' compensation claims. Some of the most difficult claims that I've handled over the years, especially from an emotional standpoint, are those cases where someone has lost their life. Well, the person was taken away from their loved ones far too soon because of a car wreck, a tractor trailer collision, or an accident at work. I've also handled wrongful death claims where the victim was killed when they were attacked at a commercial establishment, including shootings and stabbings. Through our representation of the family, we learn about that person that tragically lost their life. I learn how much of an impact that person had on their family. I get to know what kind of person they were by speaking with their boss, their coworkers, and by interviewing people in their neighborhood, their, their community, their church. And it's my job to show the insurance company or a jury what the full value of the victim's life would be. Now, two questions we often face in wrongful death situations are, one, who has the right to pursue the wrongful death claim? And then, number two, who is potentially responsible for the wrongful death and the damages that result from it? Well, let me tell you about one case in which my firm was involved. The victim was a uh, married father of two kids and he was shot and killed in the parking lot of his apartment complex. Under Georgia law, since he was married, his wife, the surviving spouse, was the one that could legally bring the action for the wrongful death of her spouse. And since there were surviving children, the spouse was required to share the proceeds of that wrongful death recovery with her kids. So the surviving spouse pursued the claim as an individual and as a representative of her minor children. Now let's talk about the second question. Who is potentially responsible for the wrongful death and the damages that result from it? Well, in the wrongful death claim where the father was killed in the parking lot of the apartment complex, we investigated whether or not the apartment complex could be held legally liable for not having adequate security to protect its tenants. And negligent security cases are not easy. They're time intensive and difficult and expensive to investigate and pursue. So let me give you five things that we do to prove the defendant business owner was negligent by not properly protecting people on its property. Number one, prior crimes. The most common way that we can prove the apartment complex is liable for these types of incidences, uh, incidents is by establishing the apartment company knew or should have known about prior crimes in the complex. One way we do this is by securing the crime reports from the local police department through an open records request. And let me give you some more facts about this particular case. In January 2008, the family lived at an apartment complex in Atlanta. The father was in the parking lot when he was the victim of a robbery and he was fatally shot. He didn't know his attackers and was a totally innocent victim. The apartment complex in which he lived heavily advertised and they marketed the fact that it was reasonably safe and the property was properly maintained. However, our investigation revealed that the complex was not properly maintained, inspected, secured, patrolled, or managed. When more investigation was done about crimes in the area, it was discovered that there were 13 armed robberies reported at that complex just in the two years before our client's tragic death. The apartment complex was on notice of a serious security problem on their premises, yet they did not do enough to protect the tenants that paid good money to live there. The complex failed to take any action to remedy or reduce the danger to its tenants, and they allowed the dangerous environment on the property to persist. Yet the apartment complex was still marketing all of their units as safe. Well, the case settled for a very high confidential figure when the apartment complex and the insurance company were presented with the results of our investigation. Now, the Georgia Court of Appeals and the Georgia Supreme Court have determined that if you can prove a defendant's property is in a high crime area, then these incidents should put the defendant on notice of the need to act to protect its customers. As the court wrote, certainly a high crime rate in a particular area may increase the risk of harms to patrons so that a prudent owner will take security precautions. All right, number two, the defendant's business, uh, the defendant business, their own internal reports. We also looked to see if the defendant's apartment complex, or the business had any internal reports 
which identified prior crimes in the area as these prior crimes are admissible. And three, we look to see what security practices are in place. Were security measures in place? If so, did the apartment complex perform them? Did the complex have a gated entry? Uh, if so, did it work or was the gate broken that allowed access to the property by anyone at any time without the presence of a security guard? Four, prior victims. We may also interview prior victims of similar crimes at the property in the area, and we get their names from the police reports. And number five, security experts. There are times when we may hire security experts to help us establish that the defendant business owner breached the standard of care by not having security measures in place or by having an inadequate amount of security. So as you can see, the handling of a wrongful death claim, especially those that have resulted because of inadequate security in an apartment or a business, can be very challenging. And it's certainly something you don't want to do on your own. You need an attorney that is experienced in these claims. Give us a call. We'll be more than happy to talk to you about your claim. The phone number, 1-800-WIN-WIN-1. The call is free. It is completely confidential, and there are no obligations whatsoever. Again, 1-800-WIN-WIN-1.